Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Here I am in front of the statue of William Ewart Gladstone at the Temple in London. And there he is resplendent in his robes as Chancellor of Oxford University. So we better look at the plinth more because it's a bizarre angle looking at my face like that. Um, so the Chancellor is the highest officer of the university and is selected by all the graduates of the university, a position that's held for life. So um, there you can see these are various figures around the base. One of them stands for education. I can't remember what the other stand for. And there is the Lion Rampant of Scotland. So Gladstone was born uh, in Liverpool in 1809. His parents came from Scotland. The surname is actually Gladstones. It's only in the 1830s that they changed it by depot. His father had been a very prosperous Leith merchant. Leith wasn't incorporated as part of the city of Edinburgh until about 1910. Um, they also uh, owned plantations in the West Indies and people were in slavery working those plantations for them. So uh, his father had been Church of Scotland, later joined the Church of England. Uh, so W. Gladstone was one of the younger sons and his father became a baronet, as in he was Sir John Gladstone and Sir John Gladstone's eldest son and inherited the baronetcy, not William Ewart. Um, and uh, this one is uh, brotherhood, yes, another liberal virtue promoted by Gladstone. Gladstone went to Eton and then to Oxford. Uh, he was a fantastic uh, schoolboy and he went to Christchurch, which was his college in Oxford, uh, one of the noblest ones. So some people said Oxford on top but Liverpool underneath. Some people were snobby because they'd made their money in, in commerce. They were not old money. And I can't read this one from here. These are female figures imploring heaven. Um, and uh, Gladstone, he was then elected uh, MP for Newark with his help uh, from the Earl of Lincoln, uh, who effectively controlled that constituency. Um, it was uh, before the Great Reform Act. Gladstone was against the Great Reform Act, but against Catholic emancipation. He was a Tory. Um, and then uh, here, slaying the serpent. So he felt he stood for righteousness. Then um, he was called the rising hope of the stern unbending Tories. Um, he was in Sir Robert Peel's cabinet. Chancellor of Exchequer and he had defended the Corn Laws. However, he came to believe that the Corn Laws were wrong. These were laws that were passed just after the Napoleonic Wars because the United Kingdom had been cut off from most continental trade for decades, well about 20 years, um, and that was an import tax on uh, foreign corn to keep um, the price of corn high. A stomach tax, some people said it was uh, grossly unjust, it was regressive, it hit the poorest hardest and it, all it did was simply enrich the wealthy. Um, and it, it was uh, on, on the staple food. It wasn't on a luxury or something, it was grossly immoral. Now uh, that's the education one. But uh, Gladstone came to agree with this and thought it wasn't necessary or helping the economy. So he reduced it and reduced it, and with Peel and about a third of the Tory party, he voted to scrap the Corn Laws. Although then he was denounced in vehement terms by the remainder of the Tory party, notably Benjamin Disraeli. So Gladstone and other Peelites decamped. He also died in 1850. And uh, Gladstone, he later helped to form the Liberal Party. Um, so, peace, retrenchment, reform, those were his watchwords of the 1860s. He was four times Prime Minister in 1868. He was there at Harden, um, chopping down trees, his estate in Wales. And the news came that uh, Her Majesty the Queen was asking him to form a government. And he announced, my mission is to pacify Ireland. It was just after, just after the Clerkenwell explosion, the Irish Republican Brotherhood started setting off bombs because they're uh, Insurrection in Ireland had been an ignominious failure, and they killed about a dozen civilians in Clerkenwell, London, uh, for which Michael Barrett was hanged outside Newgate Prison, the last public execution in the United Kingdom. Anyway, uh, so Gladstone he decided that um, he must have uh, must improve the way that landlords were behaving in Ireland. He was in favour of landlordism, but he said some Tory landlords were avaricious and were not caring for the needy. Uh, and he was against uh, repeal of the Act of Union in relation to Ireland. He was a high Anglican as well, and he previously defended the supremacy of uh, the Church of Ireland. That was a minority denomination, and he'd wrestled with his conscience over the Maynard Grant. Grant, since the 1890s, Great Britain had been subsidising a Catholic seminary in Ireland. And when that, when that was increased, the subsidy, in the 1840s, uh, he had a crisis of conscience about it. Gladstone was a difference of principles, just, it was just the difference of amount. Um, but anyway, he grew more sympathetic to Irish nationalism 
um, fast forward a bit to the 1880s when he first of all had been against Irish Home Rule, then his son blurted out to the Times his father changed his mind, was for Irish Home Rule. His father had uh, gone on holiday, William Ewan Gladstone had gone on holiday to Sweden and Norway. He, saw, he thought that nor that made Norway content to be part of the Kingdom of Sweden, when about 20 years later Norway broke away. But anyway, he thought the same formula could work uh, in Ireland. And that's why in 1886 he said, let's have Home Rule. The first Home Rule bill was defeated in the House of Commons. Then there was a general election. The Conservatives won. Quite a few of the Liberals decamped and became Liberal Unionists. Uh, he'd also lost out uh, with the Adullamites, those uh, Liberals earlier on, who, who disliked his, his notion of reform. He said they'd gone to the cave of Adullam. It's, it's a biblical reference. Um, he was an outstanding scholar, perhaps the most intellectual Prime Minister of all, the author of uh, two dozen books. They were on abstruse matters such as the relations between the, the church, the state and the universities. Because uh, he said Christianity was his, his pole star. So he had the most lively interest in theology. Um, so he came back into office again in 1892, attempted to pass the um, Irish Home Rule Bill again. It got through the Commons but was defeated in the House of Lords. It was a slightly different formulation uh, for Irish Home Rule about there was going to be two chambers and one of them was going to be elected only by the upper order, as in uh, wealthy property holders, things like that. But that defeated for the second time, so then he stood down as Prime Minister, handed over to the Earl of Rosebery, another old Etonian, uh, Scots aristocrat. So uh, Gladstone, he'd been more, he'd more or less withdrawn from politics in the late 1870s. There was a rebellion in uh, Bulgaria, then part of the Ottoman Empire, and the Ottoman Empire quelled it, but they also massacred lots of civilians. And so that's when he wrote his uh, paper, uh, the Bulgarian Horrors and the Question of the East. And his Midlothian campaign had catapulted him back into politics when he's elected by that constituency. Um, there was no love lost between him and his arch rival, Disraeli, the Prime Minister at the time. Disraeli said, I haven't read a line of this row. He thought these were just ridiculous operatics by Gladstone claiming to pursue an eth ethical foreign policy when that wasn't the case at all. Incidentally, Gladstone had changed his tune about slavery much earlier. Um, so he was an ardent imperialist, uh, Gladstone. He thought that imperialism was a force for the upliftment of the downtrodden races in other continents. It's, it's, it's a view which many would find risible today. Um, anyway, so achieved quite a bit. Uh, he uh, did help to extend the franchise, despite having me unsure about it. The Tories still are marching him there. Uh, he was against votes for women. Um, what else? Temperance, he didn't manage to deal that with that. The Liberal Party, towards the end of his life, is a bit of a rainbow coalition of nonconformists, that's Protestants outside the Church of England, of uh, temperance activists, of those who favoured Irish Home Rule, um, of, of uh, proto-socialists and so on. Anyway, he died in 1898. So, uh, that is Gladstone. Last time I was here, there was one wreath that we been laid, and that was by the Bulgarian Embassy, because of his uh, indefatigable ad advocacy of the rights of the Bulgarian nation.